Welcome back, I'm Ryan from Blue Water Gaming, and this week on Ryan Reviews, I'm taking a look at a game that, for the first time in the history of this series, no, the first time in the history of this channel, has truly broken me. It's Sekiro, Shadows Die Twice. Now before we get into the review, remember to hit the subscribe button and enable notifications if you want to be notified whenever I upload the next installment of Ride and Reviews. Now let's get on to the review, starting as always with graphics. Having played almost every From Software game for the last 10 years, I can confidently say that this is the best looking From Software game that they've ever made. It effortlessly combines a realistic look while also not making the more fantasy aspects look out of place, and I don't think the mini games actually capture it that well, and this is one of the best out there that does that. I want to give a special spotlight in this category to something that I haven't really seen many other reviewers talk about, and that is how areas in this game effortlessly flow together. They can start you out in a battlefield to transition you into a Japanese looking castle, then into a forest, and then into a mountain area where you're fighting through ravines and whatnot, and then transition into caves, and then you come out and it's a forest. And all of that just works so well, and it's not jarring when you jump from one scenery to another. Now let's talk about the technical aspects of the game. Personally, in my experience, the game ran absolutely fine, a constant solid 60 FPS no matter what was thrown on the screen, and it should because the physics in the game and a few other mechanisms in the game are tied directly to the frame rate, which is why even once you turn off V-Sync and other things like that, it will still limit the game to 60 FPS because there's other factors that have to work off the frame rate. So you're not going to get the unlimited frame rate, which kind of sucks, but I understand I've played enough from software games where things have been tied to frame rate, where it's not really surprising and I've never really had any issue with the frame rate in the game. Next, let's move on to sound, music, and voice. Strangely enough, I didn't really find myself paying attention to most of the sound effects in this game, unlike most other games. The cues for combat in this game are mostly all visual, so I didn't really pay attention to the audio because I was focused on not dying as much as possible, even though that ended in failure. But the one sound cue that I did hear distinctively, that I think uh, most people heard distinctively, was the deflecting sound effect, which is nice because I don't have to look at the bottom of the screen then back up to the enemy to make sure that I got a deflect. I can just listen for the sound cue and hope that my health didn't go down. But for most of the sound effects, they really just go into the background because people aren't really paying attention to them all that much. If I go back and think about how it sounded like all the audio was layered, it went voice first, then the sword sound effects, then the music, and then every other sound effect. So that was a bit different from many other games that will have pretty much all the sound effects kind of leveled together, but the sword sound effects were a lot louder than pretty much everything else. And I kind of like that because it added emphasis to all the attacks and blocks, which occasionally got glanced over in some of the previous FromSoft games. But in this, you can hear every single time your sword comes into contact with something. Next, let's move on to talking about voice. 
the game allows you to play with either English voice acting or Japanese voice acting. I chose the English version because I wanted to actually understand what was going on, so that is what I will be talking about. All I can say is that the voice acting in this game is superb. I've heard from several people that they kept it on the Japanese voice actors because they thought that the English ones wouldn't have done a good enough job or kept up with the Japanese voice actors. And I can say that that is just flat out wrong. These voice actors have a very extensive history in the industry, which I'll talk about here in a minute, and they all do amazing. In fact, the newest voice actor to get a named role in Sekiro is Noshir Dalal, who plays Sekiro himself, and he only has named parts in the last four years, but even some of those are notable, playing Night Rays in Fallout 4 and Charles Smith in Red Dead Redemption 2. They also have people here that have been voice acting for a much longer time, such as Brian Cummings, who plays the sculptor in Sekiro. He's been voice acting for a little over 40 years. Some of his notable roles are Nikolai Sokolov in Metal Gear Solid 3 and the Master Control Program from 1982's Tron Solar Sailor. Overall though, I think that this is an excellent cast and if you happen to play Sekiro in the Japanese voice acting, I think that you should go back and at least listen to a bit of the English voice actors. Now let's move on to talking about the music in the game, which is a section that I have a little bit of problem with, so let's get into that. Basically, a good 80% of the Sekiro soundtrack sounds almost exactly the same to me. I'm not saying that it's bland or bad, the music is actually very good and it kind of fits with this Japanese theme and really sounds like nothing that I've heard before. It just all really sounds similar to each other. There are definitely a few standout tracks such as the main menu theme which is the main theme of the whole game and a few of the boss songs are really standout high points but besides that most of the music that plays when you're just going through an area kind of just mends together and it's all just one giant song instead of the individual songs that you'd want to hear for each separate area. I'm just a little disappointed because previous FromSoft soundtracks being the Dark Souls soundtracks are some of the most memorable game music to me in my entire time playing games and this just doesn't live up to those soundtracks. Next, let's move on to story. I'm going to try to keep this simple and without spoiling anything, so here we go. Basically, you play as Sekiro, who is a shinobi trying to get his lord back from an invading army that captured his lord. And then you also have to deal with some time travel and some creatures from Japanese folklore. Something that I particularly like here is how they don't just start out with the full-on fantasy fights, they actually build up to it. Like, they start out with just some giants, and then huge snakes, and then spirits, and some crazy monkeys, and then you go on and go on, and then eventually you get into your giant fire-breathing demons. But that's at the very end. And I actually enjoyed it a bit more because it felt like the game was building up to these big moments with these big yokai instead of just throwing them out there all over the place. And since I'm already starting to talk about the fights, let's just move into the gameplay section of this review. This is probably the part in the video where I should talk about what I said in the beginning. I am absolutely terrible at Sekiro. For those of you that have played the game, I'm stuck on the Jinchiro fight. For those of you who haven't, uh, don't worry, I'm not going to spoil anything. Besides, he is the third boss in the game uh, after two bosses before that, obviously, and like seven or so mini bosses. And yeah, I'm absolutely stuck on that part. And you can see with the footage in the background, this is the mini boss before Jinchiro. And from the first time that I start fighting him to when I actually kill him is like 13 minutes is how long it takes me to learn kind of the fight and what's going on. You can see in the very beginning, I kind of get uh, just absolutely wrecked and then I slowly start to piece my way through it 
And it's kind of like an exponential curve of my understanding of the fight uh, because you can see the first ones I get absolutely wrecked and then I keep getting absolutely wrecked and then I find the special thing about the fight and then I have it finished within two to three uh, lives after that. But I've been stuck on the Jinchiro fight for hours. So far, the best that I've done against him is taking off a quarter of his first health bar. And he has two health bars and then a special third phase. And so it's going to take me a long time to beat Jinchiro. If you've played the game, you know that there are other directions that I could go into. I don't have to keep slamming my head against Jinchiro. But in the other directions, I am stuck fighting a rifle-wielding mini-boss in the Snowy Mountains, and I have not beaten Lady Butterfly, although I am pretty good at her first half of her fight. But yeah, I'm pretty much stuck at just a wall every direction I go at, and I'm not really making much progress in any direction. If you haven't seen my other videos or haven't been around my channel for a while, you might think that I'm just bad at games or that I need to get good, but I only really agree with the second part. I know that I could get good. I just need to keep trying and keep getting better. But uh, yeah, it's been a long time since I've had a challenge like this. It takes me back to the first time that I played Dark Souls. I remember that I got stuck on Sin's Fortress for the longest time, and it wasn't even the enemies that were killing me, it was the traps, and I couldn't get through the traps, and then I just had that moment of getting good, and since then, Dark Souls had not been a problem for me ever since, and I know that I just need to have that sort of moment in Sekiro, but I wanted to go over that because... You have to realize that the entire rest of this section, when I talk about gameplay, you have to put it in perspective that I am not good at it, and so I might view some of the gameplay elements differently than someone who is good at it. I've seen some speedrunners get finished with the game in under an hour. I think the fastest that I've seen is 30 minutes, which is absolutely insane to me. But yeah, they're going to have a different view of this game than I do. So with all that out of the way, let's get into talking about how much this game is like Dark Souls, despite how much people want to say otherwise. To go through the quick and easy comparisons, this game's version of Estus is the Gourd. This game's version of Estus Shards is the Gourd Seeds. It has bonfires in the form of shrines. Enemies come back to life whenever you rest at a shrine, although you actually have to choose to rest at a shrine. You can sit down at one without resting. Uh, then you also lose currency whenever you die, although in this game you only lose half of it instead of all of it. And instead of like in Dark Souls where you can go and get it back, here you actually just lose half of it. And that's basically where the comparisons end. If you are good at Dark Souls, do not in the slightest think that you will be good at Sekiro right out of the gate. Because I can tell you right now, Sekiro, in practical terms and in gameplay, is very different from Dark Souls. The analogy that I use to help compare the gameplay of Sekiro and Dark Souls is as follows. Basically, think of the characters as toolboxes. In Dark Souls, you have a very wide choice of what that toolbox is going to look like. They're usually going to be much more specific in what they do, and they're going to be very good at what they do, but they're going to be very narrow in focus. Sekiro is the high-end toolbox that can do everything. And because you're the high-end toolbox that can do everything, the game is built so that you have to do a bunch of different things, and so the fights take on a different kind of form because you have so many different tools available to you. In Dark Souls, they had to make it so that a boss could be beaten by a pure strength build, and it could also be beaten by a pure magic user. In Sekiro, 
they know exactly what you're going to have access to, so they make the fights more varied, and they kind of each have their own trick to them. The fight that you were watching in the background required me to parry in a very specific manner to beat this boss. And each boss in Sekiro has their own specific kind of intended way to beat them, which usually involves a lot of well-timed parries, so let's talk about the whole parrying and deflecting right now. Parrying is absolutely king in this game. You can block, but the blocks do not deflect all damage, and you take not only just regular damage, but also stamina damage, and if you run out of stamina, well, then you get guard broken like in every other Souls game, and that leads to some real bad problems. So basically, most fights with a mini boss or a boss comes down to parrying them at the right time so that they take stamina damage, and then once they get guard broken, you then do a devastating blow and take out a whole health bars of theirs in a single strike, then you just repeat until the boss runs out of health. The game also gives you access to other abilities called prosthetic abilities, such as ninja stars, and a super useful ability called Fireworks, which kind of stuns enemies whenever you throw it at them. There are also one-time use items that you can use, such as character buffs or things like cans of oil so that you can light enemies on fire and just different stuff like that. You then combine all of that together and boom, you get Sekiro where you just fight through a bunch of regular enemies, then run into a mini-boss, and then after a few mini-bosses, you'll get to fight an actual boss. And I can't really talk much more about that, because I'm only about, like, 15, 20% of the way through the game. Maybe not even that. It might be, like, less than 10% of the way through. So, yeah, I can't really comment much more about that. And now, let's move on to my final thoughts. You might think that since I just suck at Sekiro, that I'm going to give this game a bad score. But I've played games like this long enough. I know that behind this wall that I've hit, there is an amazing game. And I can't deny, I've had tons of fun playing the game, even when I'm getting my ass kicked. So for that, I really just have to give more of a warning for people that this game is hard. And you might hit the same wall that I've hit and you might not kind of deal with it the same way that I do. I've played Dark Souls for upwards of 2,500 hours, and I know that if I get stuck at a wall, I'm just going to push through it. And you might be different, so depending on how you would deal with a just kind of skill wall where you just have to get better yourself... That's really going to be whether or not this game is going to be worth it for you. Personally, I think that this game is definitely worth a buy. Uh, but if you don't deal with those just walls where you have to get better real well, then this game is definitely not going to be a buy for you. And that's pretty much all I have to say about Sekiro. I will be making an update video if I do ever beat it, which... At this point, it seems really unlikely, but who knows, I might get good and finally beat it. But there will be an update video, if I do, and then I will give my real final thoughts on Sekiro at that time. But that is it for this. If you like this video, then hit the like button. If you didn't, hit the dislike button. I kind of rambled on a little bit, so I don't feel too bad if you hit the dislike button. As always, I'm riding from Blue to Gaming. And I'll see you guys in the next one.